Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So this video today is going to be just a little bit different. Uh, it's a tool review from some tooling sent to me by Banggood. Um, now Banggood um, is a distributor. They don't make tooling and they distribute a lot of Chinese made tools. So I want to be uh, upfront and honest. Uh, the tooling that Banggood sent to me was sent to me at no cost to me to do with whatever I wanted to do with uh, in exchange for a review of the tooling. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, um, I, will, I will give the best possible uh, demonstration and work out of the tools that I can, but keep in mind that I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a backyard hobbyist machinist. I, am not, uh, I have no formal training or anything like that. Um, but the, the thing I want to know here is, <clears throat> will this tooling work for me? So as a backyard uh, hobbyist, uh, doesn't have a lot of money spent on, on my hobby, um, buying from uh, people like Banggood or Shars or, or Harbor Freight, uh, I'm not against that uh, if the tool or whatever that I'm getting will work for me. Um, now, you know, if you're a, a professional machinist and stuff, it might be a different story. But um, again, I think when you consider where some of these, uh, some of the stuff is price uh, pointed to, it's price pointed to uh, the hobbyist. So you would expect a, a different type of quality than you, than you would from maybe some big American uh, made brand. So that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do. So again, like I said, Banggood sent these, uh, sent this tooling to me at no cost in exchange for review. So I'm going to give the, the tools the best workout that I can, at least that uh, I'm going to try and uh, see if they work for me. So let me reposition the camera over here and let's, uh, let's take a look at what they sent for me to, to check out. Okay. So what Banggood sent me was a seven piece, um, lathe tool set. Uh, they're 10 millimeter shanks. Um, and in addition to sending me the tooling, they sent uh, some extra carbide uh, threading inserts and some extra uh, carbide for the other tool. The only uh, extra carbide I, I wouldn't have would be the uh, for the cutoff tool and for the uh, for the facing tool. So, but uh, they were kind enough, and these were shipped in plastic bags like you see here. So let's uh, let's take a let's take these out and take a look and see what we got. Um, in the box is a, uh, a package of carbides, uh, for each, each of the tools that they give you. And, um, I will show some specifications on this here. Um, well, I'll, I'll do that right now. So. Okay, so we know what we have. Uh, so let's, uh, let's let's open these up and, and take a look at them. So they look like they come all packaged in an individual little tube, and uh, it looks like the um, they have a sticker on them to identify what's in what package. Okay, so. Let's, uh, let's take a look here and see what we got. Okay, so this looks like this comes with uh, comes with a wrench. It's a T8, and the tooling is individually wrapped. And uh, so this looks like a, a facing tool. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> we'll uh, get the rest of these out. Okay, so it looks like they're all packaged with their own individual wrench. Um, the screws are already in them, and I'm not seeing uh, any spare screws, so I have to be careful. All right, so here we have a, a part-off tool. That's a T8. This one looks a little bigger. Yeah, it's a T15 for the part-off tool. And here I have a, I believe that is a 
threading tool might be, I don't know if it's inside or outside. As a T8. And that is a straight turning tool. Bunch of these a little closer together, make sure I keep everything here in frame. Looks like another T8 wrench. And that is an internal threading tool. I'm guessing it from looking at that. This is a uh, right hand turning tool. And last but not least, I believe this is a boring bar. Okay, so, um, so that's the seven tools. They were all individually packed, they come with their own wrenches. Um, they give you one carbide uh, a piece for the tools, um, which would be enough to get you started. Um, the carbide is fairly inexpensive. I'll put links for uh, this set of tools and, and the carbide net source stuff in the description below the video. Uh, again, like I said, I'm, I'm not uh, paid uh, by Banggood or I don't receive any compensation. Uh, the only compensation I received is that for doing a review of these uh, lathe tools, uh, I get to keep them or... or do whatever I want with them. All right, so look, let me. Uh, I'm going to pause the camera here, and and um, we'll get the uh, carbide in these things here, and and we'll go over to the lathe, and and we'll try these things out. So I'll catch you over at the lathe. Okay, so I'm going to start with the parting off tool, and uh, the first thing I notice is that uh, this is a, a fairly small tool, and I think the largest piece of stock that you're going to be able to part off with it is probably three quarters, maybe seven eighths. So uh, I have some three quarter aluminum round, some three quarter um, leaded uh, 12L14, and some three quarter cold rolled. So I think that would be the order of the hardness or difficulty to cut. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's part off some stuff here. I'm gonna start off with the aluminum. <clears throat> And we'll part off a couple wafers and see how that goes. All right. So, see what happens. All right, I'm going to lock my carriage. And here we go. Now the only thing I'd done prior to this here was just put the tool perpendicular to the line of the uh, axis of the lathe and centered it up. Of course I am cutting without any lubricant, but it seems to be cutting really well. Then again, you know, aluminum is pretty easy. Now keep in mind that I only have an Atlas lathe and an Atlas uh, it's a 10F, so it's got a 10 inch swing. Uh, it's a pretty lightweight lathe when you consider everything. So, make this first cart cut dry. And I tell you what, this is, I'm um, feeding by hand. It's cutting real well. Oh yeah, looky there, I like that. Not sure where the wafer went, and I'm not gonna dig it out, but let's go in and let's take another pass real quick. Cut off a bit more. And this time uh, I use a little lubricant. Now I like to use kerosene for uh, for aluminum. 
I guess I like to use kerosene because I have kerosene and I don't have any uh, WD-40 handy. And again, I'm, I'm cutting at a lower speed. I'm not in back gears. Oh! Well. Let's take a look here and see what happened. Well. Can we see that? The tool snapped off. So, hmm. Tell you what, I was cutting aluminum, so I would say uh, that one's not going to work so well. <laughs> All right, but we'll examine this here just a little. We'll examine this better over at the bench, okay? So let me uh, pause here and, well, let's try another tool. Okay, so I have a inch and three-eighths uh, piece of cold rolled in the uh, chuck and I've got the um, the facing tool <clears throat> um, on center so let's take some facing cuts and see what happens we'll start out with a light one it seems to be cutting really good Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to take a slightly deeper cut. Feed it in, see what happens here. Again, that's gotten really good. I'm decent finish. And I, I noticed that these uh, inserts they don't have a lot of radius on them, so you'd want to feed slow, or maybe take a diamond hone and uh, put just a little bit of a radius on the insert if you needed a better finish than that. But my goal is to see, you know, will these tools work for me? You know, would I would I buy them, or you know, would I recommend them to my friends or whatever? And there we have it. You know, yeah, it feels good. Yeah, I tell you what. I mean, I think the facing tool works out pretty good. Uh, well, I'll say much better than the uh, than the uh, parting tool. All right. So look, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in the right hand um, turning tool, and uh, let's see how that one does. Okay, so I have the uh, right hand turning tool, uh, and I have it uh, on center, and let's uh, let's let's skin some off this bar and see what happens. All right, I'm going to take a, uh, a fifteen thousand step the cup, and I'm hand feeding.
Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna take a uh, a twenty thousandth, and again hand feed. <clears throat> Chatter. Need some oil. Take a look at that. So yeah, um, I think that would work for me too. <clears throat> Again, um, you know, I have a fairly light lathe with an Atlas 10. Um, now the finish isn't so good. Now that could be my turning speed, but the there isn't much of a radius on these tools, so that could be part of it so i think that um, you know maybe putting a little bit of a, a radius on there would help and of course you see this is 1018 so cold rolled and um but i'm i'm perfectly uh happy with that tell you what let me put in the uh straight uh turning tool and and let's put a chamfer on there and see how it does for that and we'll be right back Okay, so I have the straight turning tool in there. It is, uh, it is on center. Let's uh, chamfer an edge and see what happens. that'd do. Alright, so um, let me get a hole poked into uh, something and let's try out this boring bar. So I'll uh, have you back here in just a minute. Okay, let me uh, I'll bug up the camera too much here. Okay, so uh, here I have a piece of aluminum that has a hole drilled into it and this is, uh, this is not a round hole. As a matter of fact, it's drilled off center. So let's, uh, let's make a a round hole, which that's what a boring bar is really good for. Take about a ten foul depth of cut. All right, I want to try uh, all right, twenty foul depth of cut. Okay. 
Looks like a light finishing cut here. I'll tell you what, <clears throat> that's a little rough on the board, but then again, these uh, these cutters, or these uh, inserts, they don't have a whole lot of radius on them, so I think just rounding them over would be good, but they seem to cut well. So let's, uh, let's go back over to the bench and talk about these here just a little bit, so I'll see you at the bench. Okay guys, um, so I've used all the tools a little bit except for the two threading tools. And the reason why I didn't um, use the threading tools is, uh, well, two reasons. Actually, these are very, very small insert. Okay, I don't know uh, how often I would be cutting a thread uh, that small. And I tend to only set my uh, lathe up to cut threads when I actually have to cut threads because I have a... Uh, I don't have a quick change gear box on my lathe. I've got manual change gears. And uh, for any of you guys that's got one of those, you know that uh, generally when you get your feet or whatever set up, you don't really want to mess with it until you actually have to do something a little different. Now that's not to say that uh, quick change gearbox is better, <clears throat> um, but it is if, if for production for sure. All right, so let's talk about these tools individually. Um, the facing tool, uh, done pretty good and uh, one thing I know is that these are it's a positive rate tool okay um, it's it's pretty it's got pretty sharp you know so um, it, you know when you feed it you're you're not gonna have a great finish unless you have really a super super slow feed or maybe if you were to take a diamond hone and round that carbide out a little bit and that's sort of true for all of these um, but Aside from the um, cutoff tool, these these tools here they performed in a way that maybe I would expect them to perform. You know, they they cut well. The carbide was new and sharp. The only thing that I would probably say is, uh, you know, I have an Atlas 10 and uh, I have an AXA tool post. So you know, most of those are half inch or so uh, uh, tool holders. These are three eighths tools. So. It, the tools uh, feel a little light for my lathe, okay? Um, but they, they worked well, so I mean, I, I can't uh, complain. And the, the price point in these is, is very low, if I remember right. I'll have to look again. Um, but uh, if I were needing some carbide insert tools, I probably, I probably wouldn't object to buying them, especially maybe if I had a smaller lathe, like a... Like a, if I still have my Dunlap um, um, six-inch lathe, or you know, if I had a seven by twelve, or if I had a mini lathe, or something like that, the boring bar uh, done well. Uh, again, like I said, the only only fuss that I would really have is there's a very very super small radius on on these uh, on these uh, carbides, so uh, getting a good finish might be an issue. But now that aside, let's talk about. Let's talk about um, the uh, parting tool and maybe why I'm not being maybe why I'm not being so critical. Um, let's see if I can zoom in here. Uh, I'm not gonna focus. Okay. All right. So I was parting off this piece of aluminum and using uh, kerosene as a, as a coolant. Uh, the first run was a dry run and I made it about oh maybe an, an eighth inch or a little deeper into the cut and then there was a pop and 
the bottom the bottom of the uh, tool holder snapped snapped off just I mean it snapped hard too um, but now it's a nice clean brake there's there's no bending or anything like that so honestly um, if I can keep it in frame honestly I think uh, I got a defective tool and I think it's defective because I think it was heat treated I'm, I'm sorry I think it was hardened but I don't know that it was heat treated you know um, I, I would have never expected uh, that to snap um, just making a cut on aluminum and of course it did it did snap the end of the uh, if you look there uh, focus maybe it did snap the end of the carbide tip off so so um, let me uh, reposition the camera and, and I'll have some closing thoughts on this so I'll catch you here in just a second Okay, guys, so the big question is, um, would I buy them or would I recommend them to my friends? And it's, a, it's a, probably a pretty firm maybe yes, okay? And let me explain my maybe yes. The, um, of the five tools that I tested, four performed quite well. It was the cutoff tool that uh, snapped uh, cutting aluminum, which just frankly sh shocked me really I didn't expect that um, but when I got took a good close look at the tool uh, I see the crystalline structure so it looks to me like it was uh, hardened but maybe not tempered and there's uh, you know this question in my mind well you know I've got uh, that's not a that's not a big lathe but it's not really a small lathe either maybe the 3 8 tooling is a little light for the size of the lathe and the feed pressures and that sort of stuff um, now I think that would probably they would work great on um, you know the smaller you know seven by twelves or you know the um, maybe the sure lines or something I don't know how big those lathes are but I know that they're smaller uh, they probably work great on that I think uh, the reviews that I've seen for like the twelve millimeter tooling of the same styles has been really great so I was uh, I was really geared up to uh, to have a pretty good uh, review now. I do want to say this for the for the price point. I have to look it up, but I think it was under thirty bucks uh, U.S. Um, and uh, you know, carbide tooling and and the and the inserts are pretty cheap. I think for the home hobbyist like me, I think that's probably a pretty good deal. Keeping in mind what you're paying for. So that's uh, that's kind of all I really got to say about it. I, I probably will continue to use the tools, uh, so a couple of them anyway. I doubt. Uh, I don't see myself making threads that small. The threading uh, inserts are a little small. I'm, I'm going to say maybe a 28 TPI or something like that is about as large of a thread as you're going to get off of those. But if you're doing very small hobby stuff with threads, uh, they'd probably be fine. And uh, and I, I, I could see a use in the future maybe for them, but it would, it would be pretty infrequent. So uh, other than that, hey guys, I appreciate you taking time uh, to watch this tool review. I'd uh, like to thank uh, Banggood for giving me the um, opportunity to actually review some of their tools. So uh, it is what it is, and and um, and we'll see what happens going forward. So other than that, thanks guys for taking the time to watch my videos. I hope you find them helpful or useful or entertaining. If you do, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Um, other than that, uh, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Uh, if, uh, if you celebrate Christmas, we're sneaking up on that here soon. And uh, other than that, have a blessed day.